Alright, I've done this sort of thing before, so I'm going to skip the details. This is a log, and it's one solid piece. It's just got a whole bunch of paint on it. And as if you needed another reason to make this minimalist table saw, this is the perfect excuse to do it. I'm trying to true it all up so that it's on a nice tight, or nice flat plane so that I can use it for just around the shop. This goes on the top of a metal frame, it's on a stool. And I've had it for a long time and I'm kind of partial to it, but I want it to be true so that I can do things with it. Notice that I'm tightening this clip to make it springy so that it doesn't shoot all over the place. And I think you can probably guess where this is going. Alright, I hope you can make sense of what we're looking at here. I've lowered the blade, that's it right there in the distance, to one of the low spots on the log which naturally has a kind of shape like this. And that way when I slide this back and forth, it will knock off just the high spots. So let's give it a whirl. And no, I'm not zip tying my trigger. Well, we already knew that this was going to work, but it's going to be somewhat tedious. And I think that all you're going to get is a couple of high speed shots. I'm not doing anything fancy from a productive production value standpoint. I just want this over with. You know what, YouTube? I'm getting kind of tired of you watching me work all the time. Especially with all the mean things that you've been saying to me lately. How about I'll just show you what happens whenever it's done. And for now, I want you out of my shop. Alright, alright, you can watch. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. I know you only want what's best for me. It's just that you're always putting your leg right in the way. Legs, all three of them. Well, this worked pretty nicely, but we already know that. And I'm using the piece of glass to locate and eradicate high spots. And it's not crown mold, it doesn't have to be perfect. Please don't leave me comments about how I ought to use a whatever type plane. I don't care. Ah, nice and flat. Now keep in mind that I'm only taking off not even an eighth of an inch. So there's not much sticking down out of the blade. I mean here, it's sticking down a good half inch because this material is probably three-eighths of an inch higher than the average here. But because I'm taking so little off, I was able to abandon this whole springy clamp idea about halfway through, and it started going much faster kind of get a feel for the area that the 
saw is actually cutting after a few minutes. And I would say it took, I don't know, seven or eight minutes straight in order to do the entire other side. But this is the top, so I want it to be a little nicer looking. Now in order to set the blade, I found the lowest dish and then I just released the blade until it fell down into that dish and then I lowered it just a little bit beneath that and that should be the lowest point on this which now I can transfer as a plane to the entire top surface. Well, I experienced my first real kickback, but that's not as dramatic as it might sound if you're uh, accustomed to using a circular saw. But I don't think any damage was done. So I had thought that if I made the rails go like this, like a wedge, so that as the blade is spinning, it drives it this way, tighter into the wedge. But in theory, that sounds like a great idea but the log isn't shaped like a perfect circle. So as you spin it, the, the wedge becomes either tighter or looser, and that idea just kind of falls to hell. So, uh, really when you're making the deep cuts, you want to do the springy clamp pressure thing, but when you're just doing the, the superficial finishing, just knocking off these little tiny variations, then you can do it with uh, the log being loose because that type of kickback has hardly any, any energy at all. As a matter of fact, if you see these little swirlies, I was, <laughs> and I'm glad you weren't watching because of safety people, but uh, I was actually using the force of the kickback to kind of rotate the log around a little bit, it would just move a few degrees each time and that would provide me with a new surface to knock down. Uh, you know, like anything else, you jump in and as you're doing it, you modify your technique. But I will show you what it looks like when it's all done. Well, in the end, it turned out wonderful. And this thing has, once again, paid for itself. As is the case with any procedure, I improved as I went. And I eventually learned that a nice compromise between letting it flop all over the place and constantly adjusting the clamp was to just rotate it to where I want and then drive a shim in until it's tight. So pat yourself on the back if you were sitting there going, Use a shim, use a shim, use a shim. But at least I figured it out eventually. In case you're wondering, this is just glue and fillers and glued wedges. I never wanted to drive this larger. And this log is very old and very dry. But I never put any metal objects in this because I had always known that I was going to do this. Projects like this are often long term and they can't be finished in an afternoon and for that reason a lot of this crap takes a lot of patience so I spread wood filler on the underside and someday I will probably take it back off and finish the underside with polyurethane I think I'm going to finish the top with polyurethane and I'm going to leave it pretty rough, but I want it to be moisture proof. And I want to, now that it's done curing, I want to get it to a place where it never splits anymore.
Well, over the course of the next few days, I'll make this top look nice and pretty. And I'll give it some polyurethane or something. And in the future, I'll give you an update on some later video and show you how it turned out.